All right. So in our seats. And let's just make sure we're doing this belly breathing or at least, at least draw awareness to it. It's helpful if you don't have one of those belts to just take your hands to your lower abdomen and even middle abdomen and begin to breathe in and out through the nose with awareness, meaning you're paying attention to your breath. You're paying attention to how it feels to breathe in and to breathe out. So when we breathe in, there's an expansive quality. You can feel it in the belly. You can feel it in the side ribs and sometimes up in the heart. That would come last. When we breathe out through the nose, it's going to be a top to bottom. So you exhale, you'll feel a little contraction, and then you exhale a little bit more and you feel a little bit more contraction. Now, when we're building strength, we're really building that contraction, but when we're relaxing, it's actually a softer, a softer contraction, if you will. So breathing in and out through the nose. This is something we cultivate over time, just like the awareness that we might be breathing in and out through our mouth. It takes time. But with practice, it can be modified to a nice, healthy, deep. So deep means down in the belly, low, abdominal breathing, diaphragmatic breathing. Notice how when you focus on your breath, it gives you a focal point. I want to take your mind's eye to something that makes you happy. It can be an event. Sometime in your life, any time in your life where you felt joy. I want you to picture that time. Perhaps where you were, how old you were, or are, it could be now. Perhaps certain colors come to mind. People's faces. Maybe it's your pet's face or your friend's smile. Just pick a time that brings you overall joy. And then I want you to notice where you feel that in your body most. So this is a somatic exercise. <clears throat> Yoga is a mind-body exercise. And what this helps us to do is to bring awareness into how our experiences, our environment impacts our body with information that helps us to know how to respond to life happening around us. And that's why we do this type of exercise. Let's begin to move. So when you're moving, how does this tie in? If something doesn't feel right, that also is information for you. Very often like an unintentional contraction or squeezing in, that can be a sign that something isn't right. So we use that information to make an informed decision about what's next. And let's circle the other way. So we're going towards the left sitting bones, lean back on your sitting bones to the right and towards the front. Just circling around, nice, easy movement. 
and then moving back to neutral. Good, let your body sway towards your right sitting bone. Now I'm mirroring you because I had feedback that that wasn't happening lately. So now I hope it is. And now we're gonna lean the other way. So I'm leaning to my left. At least that's how you should be reading it. And go back towards the right. Notice what it feels like to lean to the right. And then press down through both feet and lean to the left. And you might notice how you lean to the left and the right foot feels lighter. And come back to center. Drop your chin towards your chest. Feel a lengthening through the back of the neck and maybe towards the upper back. And then inhale and lift up. Let's turn the head to the right. Take your chin down towards your chest, just slightly. So we're just moving little movements here. Chin down towards the right, angling down towards the shoulder and the collarbone. Inhale the head back, looking towards your right, and then inhale, move to center. Exhale, drop your right ear towards your right shoulder. Take a breath in and a breath out. Breathe in and breathe out. Inhale, head rises. Good. Turn your head towards the left. Relax your shoulders. So this is a good place where those noodles behind your back could give you feedback even though you're not, because you're not moving your spine forward and back and left and right. Take your chin down towards your collarbone. You're still to the right. So you might feel a stretch in a different place in your neck. Inhale, head rises, still looking to the left. Inhale, chin back to center and neutral. Drop the left ear towards the left shoulder. This is my favorite, gotta admit. Good, circle the head down to your chest and towards the right. And then circle it down again towards the left and inhale back to center. Good. Lift both heels, push down through the balls of your feet. Good, feel your toes. You can even push your toes down, the balls down and kind of direct, you're pushing down and towards you, even though they're not moving. You might feel the hamstrings begin to activate a little bit. Let's lower the heels down, place your feet underneath your knees. Now press down through your right foot and sitting bone and notice what happens in the thigh and the hips. It contracts, then let that go, let it go. Let's do the other side. Push down now through the left foot, pull the heel towards you. Notice as you push down and pull it towards you, what's firming and let it go. I even felt my belly, it kind of contracting. Now push down through both feet and notice as you push down through your feet and then your hips, your spine can grow tall. So press your hands into your thighs and feel a nice lengthening through your waistline. Inhale, take your arms out in a T, turn the palms upwards and thumbs back behind you, spread your fingers. Feel the circulation in your hands, maybe in your arms and release that spreading and notice how it feels. Right, or right arm, over left, big hug. Yep. Cross your arms over and give yourself a hug. So your fingers are going back behind you. Good. Let's twist towards the right. Not going to twist very far, right? And then inhale to center and twist towards the left. Notice how that's different because we'll do the bigger twist and you'll see <clears throat> and you'll feel. 
Inhale to center. Open up your arms wide. Press your palms away from you as the fingers rise. Breathe in and breathe out. Good, now extend through your arm bones, out through your fingertips. Left arm over right. Big hug, big hug. Twist to your left. Take a breath in, belly expands. Take a breath out. You feel a softening, but you remain tall. Inhale to center and toward your right. Breathe in and breathe out. Good, open up your arms, palms face upwards. Place your thumb on the insides of your palms, wrap your fingers around and circle your wrists. Ooh, feel how tight that is. I'm assuming it's tight for you because it's tight for me. And then circle the other way. That's not always the case though. We all have different places where it's tight or a little longer. Good, bring your arms into cactus. Press your sitting bones down into the earth. Take your hands behind your head. So just fingertips touching, see that? Good. Drop your right elbow towards the right. Left elbow rises. Lean slightly back into your fingertips. We're never pushing the head forward. We're gently leaning the head back into the fingertips. The fingertips are supporting the head. You might take your chin slightly towards your chest to lengthen the back of the neck. You get to make the adjustments. Push down through your feet, rise up. Exhale, tip the left elbow down and right elbow up. Same thing here, lean slightly back. Feel your wings as they open. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale to center. Release your hands in your lap. And let's go for cat pose and cow pose. So those of you who haven't seen it before, exhale round. That's the cat. Inhale, lift up. This is the cow. Now there's still a slight toning in the belly, but sometimes when you're new, you kind of let it go and that's okay. Shoulder blades coming together, sit bones back. What we don't want to do is like hyperextend one way, which this would be the way that we would probably do that. Exhale, round your spine. Here's cat, lean back, arms get long, chins to chest. Belly pulls in towards the spine on your exhale. Inhale, lift up, shoulder blades move in, sit bones move back. One more time. Exhale, pull in. Feel nice length. You're feeling your shoulder blades spread here. They're going side to side. And then inhale, lift up. Last night when I was teaching, someone said they get really tight behind their shoulder blades and in between. That's really common. So cat can help a little bit there and help a little bit. Good. Let's inhale and take our arms out to the side and towards the sky, towards the sky. Then make a V with your arms. Then make a V with your arms. Now reach to the corners of your room, right and left. Yes, V for victory. You got it. We're gonna twist now towards the right. Take your right hand to the left thigh, or your right, I'm sorry, your left hand to your right thigh and right hand behind you. Neck turns last. Breathe in. Feel a nice long spine. Breathe out through the nose. Inhale, V for victory. Arms into that V. You can spread your fingers here 
And as your arms lengthen, feel your arm bones pull towards your shoulder blades and you might feel your shoulder blades move towards each other. And then relax your neck, make sure there's no tightening going on there. If it's too much pulling, you will feel crunching. So reach again outward into the corners. And then pull the arm bones back. Good, let's twist now to the left. Right hand outside, left thigh, left hand behind you. Head turns last, opening up the left shoulder. So you might circle that shoulder up and back. Breathe in and breathe out. Breath is in and breath is out. Inhale, return to center and we will do a sun salute. Yep, you can go back into that V, I love it. Take your arms out to the side and then fingertips to your hips. Pull the elbows towards each other as you lengthen your spine. And then make sure the neck feels long here. Some people need to feel like they're taking their chin slightly to their chest. Some people it helps to feel as though the tops of their ears are leaning slightly back. Notice what it feels like for you. Breath is in and breath is out. Breath is in, tack your hips down, breath is out. Now go ahead and release your arms into your hands into your lap. Push your palms down into your thighs. Take your ears, uh, take your ears, take the tops of your shoulders up and back. Roll your shoulders up and back. Good. Now exhale, lengthen the spine forward as you push your palms into your thighs. Release your head and your jaw and let your arms go. Wherever they dangle is okay. You can have your hands on your shins. You can have your hands on your thighs or your fingertips may dangle towards the earth. Let your head sway to the right and then gentle movement to the left. Breathe in. You might feel your belly expanding into your thighs as you breathe in and then breathe out. Inhale, hands to your hips, elbows gently pull towards each other, push down through your feet, arms out to the side, up towards the sky. This is a sun salute. Bring your palms down to heart center. Feel your palms touching. This is a somatic activity. Yoga is a mind body practice. I stay away from calling it exercise though. It, it's very much movement. Dropping your right hand towards the chair, inhale your left arm upwards towards the sky. Turn your thumb back and your palm towards you. That helps alignment. And then we're gonna take a side bend towards your right. Breathe in, breathe out. Maybe you gaze up towards the corner in your room. Maybe you don't. You notice how your belly has to pull in and up or you will fall to the side. We don't want that. Press down through your feet, rise up, extend your arm out to the left. Gaze at your fingertips. Breathe in, breathe out, bring your hand back, place both hands underneath the left thigh. Pull the knee in towards you. Good, and let's circle it around. Circle the joint around. I've had a lot of people coming to me with psoas, things going on. That's the deep hip flexors. So that's the area right here. And sometimes it impacts lower back. And then the other way. So we really want to make sure we give some attention to them. What happens is when we're sitting a lot, the hip flexors get tight. Good. Bring the knee back into center, lift tall, and then extend your leg forward. Heel is down. I'll turn to the side because I can't tell if you're seeing my heel or not. 
Good, hands are on the side of the chair, pressing the heel down, toes are upward. Exhale, point. Inhale, lift and push the heel away. Spread your toes. You don't even have to have your eyes open here. You're just telling your toes to spread. Doesn't matter if they do or not because we have neuroplasticity. We're opening up pathways in our brain. Communication. Drag the right heel back underneath the knee and let's lift. Actually, now we gotta do that side bend to the right. So holding the left side of your chair, lift your left arm up and take your side bend now towards the left. Breathe in and breathe out. Breath is in and breath is out. Lower the arm, lift your right knee up, circle it around and about. Circle it, then bring it back in, hug it in, extend the heel. Let it drop down, pull the heel, pull the toes towards you, push the heel away. If you feel a little locking behind the knee, give it a little, give it a little bounce there. Breathe in, breathe out, drag both heels in. Good, let's do chair pose. I know it's your favorite, right? That requires core work. Now you might have a chair in front of you so that you can hold on to it when you do your chair pose. You might want to place a block in between your thighs. I want to teach you what's called like a two-part exhale. So you're going to take an inhale in and the belly expands, but we don't want it to stay that way. So when you exhale, you're going to exhale a bit, feel the belly pull in, and then you're going to exhale some more and feel some more pulling in. So you can think of it like when you exhale, the pelvic floor is tightening and then the lower abs, that's number one. Then we pull in again and more of the area above your navel or your belly button, maybe to your rib cage, it, it contracts in. So try it without lifting first. So inhale, belly expands. Exhale, pull the pelvic floor and the lower belly in. Then pull a little bit more and finish the exhale. Inhale, belly expands. Exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly pull in. Then pull in a little bit more and you'll feel like you're pulling your abdominal muscles upwards. All right, let that go. Now let's do our chair pose. You can have your hands for chair pose at your hips, on the chair in front of you, you can have them straight forward. You know I love holding a stick or a cane because I think it gives some nice good momentum and support. So we're rocking forward and back. Notice how your belly engages as you rock back. Now this may be it for you. You might feel like you're not, you're feeling a little fatigued and you might not lift off. You might just lift off a little millimeter or you might lift off a centimeter or inches. So here we go, holding onto the chair, holding onto the stick, arms maybe forward or at your hips, you're feeling your thighs work. Take an inhale, exhale, pull the pelvic floor in, contract your lower bellies. Exhale a little bit more, feel the whole abdominal while pulling and up. Exhale, or take an inhale and then exhale, have a seat. That's work. It's work, we're building some heat. Rock forward and back, we're gonna do it again. I'm getting my handy dandy cane over here because I like to use it. So if you have a stick, you can use it. Now you can keep the block in between your thighs, which does provide stability or not, if you wanna play without it. And then 
Sometimes it's the strap that's going around the thighs. I'll show that after this one. So we're leaning forward and back. And then when we're ready, we might lift off. Arms are forward, sit bones are back. Breathe in, breathe out. Pull your belly in and up, pull it in and up again. Maybe the sit bones go back a little bit more and your arms lift a little bit more. These are all maybes. They're all options. Exhale, have a seat. Awesome. You can feel your thighs working, right? They are working in this pose. Now, sometimes the adductors are the, the culprits and they need some strengthening. Sometimes it's the out, that's the inside of the thighs. Sometimes it's the outside of the thighs that need some contraction work. So you can take a strap and put it around your thighs. I already had a loop here. And then tighten it. And those, those uh, stretchy straps do work too. Now make sure it's out of the way so you don't trip on it. So instead of hugging the block, we're pushing out into the strap. And we'll go again. Take your time, we'll do it a few times. So instead of hugging the block, we're pushing out into the strap. We're leaning forward and back. And then just feel the sensation of pushing your thighs out into the strap. And maybe you lift off. So it's same thing lifting off, but now we're pushing the thighs out into the strap. Lean the sit bones back. Heart may lift. Take an inhale and exhale and slowly lower down. You may notice one way feels easier than the other. So in general, I think it's probably good to practice it both ways. But if one way feels like you're a little stronger, you might wanna practice the other way on a two to one ratio. We'll go again this way. If this wasn't working for you, you can put the block in. Now, some people do the block and the strap and that's possible as long as you got room there. And um, that you can kind of focus on both happening. So you might focus first on the inner thighs pressing into the block, and then you could focus on the outer thighs pushing into the strap. Yep, I'm building a little heat, maybe you are too. So here we go again, rocking forward and back. And this may be it. So as you lean forward, you can maybe inhale. And then as you lean slightly back, pull your belly in and up. Then we lean forward, maybe we lift off. Sit bones are back. You can push out into your strap or into your block, but it's kind of hard to do both. It really is. Um, so check it out and see what you think. You can always drop the block and let it go and push out into the strap. The block may or may not drop and that's okay. Now your head is in line with your spine. So you don't want it dropping down and you don't want it dropping back. So back of the neck is long, exhale, have a seat. Looks beautiful, Esther. That looks beautiful. Awesome. Great thing to play with. Strap or block, or maybe doing both. Put that all to the side. We don't want to trip on our, our uh, yoga props. And I'm going to move the chair back to center. And now, from hugging the block, your inner thighs might have gotten tight. So a good thing to do after chair pose is goddess. And then we'll get standing and we might do goddess standing too. So if you're feeling like it's accessible to you to stand today, go for it. Your heels are going to be underneath your knees. And we lift tall. Let's inhale. Heels rise. Exhale, slowly lower the heels down. Inhale, they rise. Exhale, they lower. 
Good. Let's inhale and take the arms forward, interlace your fingers, press the palms away. Awesome. Good. Now we're going to shift to Ganesha Mudra. So that's where you're going to clap, you're going to bring your palms in front of each other, and then the, it's like you kind of claw your, your hands together. One hand is in front and one is in back. Now, at the same time, relax your elbows and your shoulders because they'll tend to crunch up as we pull them away. So you're pulling your hands away from each other, beautiful. And maybe bob your head so we don't get any tightness creeping in there. We don't want to transfer stress into the body. Come back to center and now reverse it. So now the, my, you have one hand in the front, one in the back, doesn't matter which one. Pull the hands away from each other, drop the shoulders and the elbows a little bit. Good, notice one might feel stronger. We're pulling one hand away from the other. Don't claw yourself too hard and then release, let that go. Now, the same thing that we were doing with chair pose, I mean, we can do with goddess. You might notice your knees fall in. So if they fall in, you have a few choices. One is to take your hands on the inside of the thighs, like this, and push inner thighs into hands and hands into thighs. Uh, that is going to strengthen the inner thigh area. So we're giving feedback as we lift tall. We can also take the hands on the outsides of the thighs and push the outside of the thigh into the hands and the hands into the outside of the thigh and let that go. Let's take a side bend towards the right. So circle your arm around and about. You can start with smaller circles, eyes following hand and eventually find your stretch over towards the right. Elbow may be bent or straight. You might kind of play with bending and straightening too. Breathe in and breathe out. Notice sensation in your body. If it's accessible to you, you might lift the bottom arm, your right arm. Feel your shoulder blades on your back. Breathe in through the nose, out through the nose. Press down through your feet, rise up, hands at your heart. Feel your palms touching. Other side, forearm to the thigh. Draw the shoulders back. Notice if your ribs are forward and then gently pull them back like cat pose. Then circle the right arm around and about. Yeah, you can kind of lead with your elbow, hand moving last. You can go kind of slow like you're moving through water or thick air. I don't know if the thick air sounds as desirable. And then eventually find the arm over the ear and push down through both sitting bones into the chair as you reach to your left. Belly pulls in and up. Take an inhale. That's the belly expanding. Take an exhale, pull the pelvic floor in, then maybe do that two-part exhale and pull in again. If it's accessible, lift the left arm. Breathe in, breathe out, lift up, hands thread down to heart. Bring both feet back to center. And we will do warrior pose expanding. You can also do warrior pose in your seat. You decide, take note. How does your body feel now? Let your inner pilot light. I was just reading this book by Lisa Rankin. She's a physician who does a lot of mind-body work. Um, pretty fascinating work, actually. 
And she calls our inside knowing our inner pilot light. So you're gonna bend, take your right leg out to the side, your left leg out to the side, toes are forward at first, and then you'll turn your right toes outward to the right. I'm gonna move the chair because it just blocks your view, but you keep your chair where it needs to be. Bending your right knee over your right heel. You can always move your feet to make that adjustment so that the width is right for you. Exhale, bend the knee over the heel. Inhale, we straighten. Exhale, we bend. Inhale, we straighten. Exhale, bending. Now tone your right hip by angling it down. On your next exhale, pull the pelvic floor and your belly in, maybe extend one or both arms. Hands may be on the chair. Feel your feet press down into the mat. Really press them down. Inhale, straighten the right leg. Awesome. Take a breath in and a breath out. Exhale, bend the knee once again. We're gonna go for a reverse warrior. Hands on the back chair, inhaling, right arm up. The arm reaches upwards, so we get a good lengthening through the right side of the body. Then take your arm over your ear. Now you can gaze up as long as you feel balanced. Feel your feet right and left push down and pull them towards each other isometrically. Inhale, exhale, we pull in. Inhale, lift back up, all 10 toes forward. Walk your feet back towards each other. How does the body feel? How does the body feel now? And left side, I'm gonna switch the chair. Feet wide, toes forward. You might make your adjustments. You ask yourself, is this as wide that my feet should be? Should they go a little bit wider? Use your inner pilot light to let you know that answer. Then we're gonna turn the left toes out. Bend the knee over the heel and then straighten. You might widen a little bit, bend the knee over the heel, straighten. Exhales may be the downward movement. Inhales may be the upward movement. Exhaling knee over heel. Now notice, does it feel like the knee is falling in or out? You can use your hand for a little guidance. Hand can be on the inner thigh or the outer thigh. Maybe you lift the arm. Maybe you, you gaze over the left arm. Maybe you lift both arms. Breath is in, breath is out. Inhale and exhale, return to center. Take note of how your body feels. We'll go for the reverse warrior, bending knee over heel. Maybe lifting one or both arms. Take the left arm overhead, reach it skyward. Find your reverse warrior. You can use your hand for support on the chair or maybe it goes down to your leg. Mind your balance, respect and honor it. Inhale, rise up, all 10 toes forward and return to center. How's the body feeling now? Let's do a sun salute. It's kind of nice to do a symmetrical sun salute after we've done the asymmetrical poses. So one or both arms lift up. We reach high. 
You might soften your knees as we start to fold forward. So you may bend your knees, arms go out to the side. Maybe you feel your shoulder blades come onto your back as you arms are out to the side. Feel as though the crown of the head is moving forward and your shoulder blades are on your back. Exhale, drop your arms down. They can come to your shins or your thighs. Circle the sh shoulders towards your ears and back. Back shoulder blades on the back. Push down through your feet. Inhale, rise up. One hand may be on the chair or both. Arms lift. Exhale, thread the hands down to heart center. Let's practice tree pose. So for tree pose, you can keep the chair to the side or you can have a chair in front of you. Those of you who've been around, you know there's so many variations. We're gonna transfer the weight to the right leg and foot. You can start in your mountain pose, a good place to start. You might use a block. You might use a cane. So first variation might be left foot to right ankle or heel. Lift up and out of your spine. You're pushing your foot into your ankle and your ankle into your heel. Another option is to take your foot up to the shin. Another option is to put your foot on the block. This is an asymmetrical pose. We're standing on the right foot. The left leg is somehow changed. It's not the same. There's not maybe as much weight on it. Make sure you soften that, that standing leg. So you might even bounce a little bit to feel that it's not locking. And we lift up and out of the waist. Choose where your hands are. One on the chair, one at your heart, at your hip or overhead. Breathe in and breathe out. Breath is in and breath is out. Breathe in, breathe out, tone your belly, your pelvic floor, lifting up. Exhale, release the arm down. Take your feet a little wider and circle the hips. Little loosening up there. We'll go to the other side. One side is always different than the other. It's not a better or a badder. It is. It is what it is. So transferring weight to now the left side, right foot at your ankle, on the black, at your shin, maybe on a chair seat. That's a possibility. Try to keep the hips level though. Get a little bounciness through that standing leg. So it's not, the knee isn't crunching, isn't crunching and then the leg is pulling back. That'll throw you off. So softness behind the knee, lift in and up through your inside. Breathe in, breathe out, hand to your hip, hand to your heart, both hands to your heart or overhead. Yup, you choose. Find a spot to stare at that's not moving that will help your balance. So will your breath. Breathe in, belly expands. Breathe out, push your foot down, lift up tall. Exhaling hands at the heart or on the chair, release your leg, let it go. Time for wall dog. Hands on the back of the chair. Shoulders up and back, so we're in mountain pose. Walk your feet back, walk your feet back. Toes are forward. Now you can have your feet a little wider for balance and support. Bending the knees. And then slowly straightening. If your shoulders are sore, you might bend your elbows a little bit or I'll show you another option, which I think is nice. Bending knees. 
sit bones back. Pull the belly in and up. When you do that, the sit bones angle down. Crown of the head is reaching forward. Head is not down. You're trying to lift your ears towards your arms. They may or may not be in the same line. Back of the neck is long. And then slowly walk your feet to your chair. Now, here is another option for your arms. Your hands can be on the chair, which sometimes is very helpful for the shoulders. The other option, holding the side of the chair, is to come down onto your forearms. So your shoulders are under, I mean, your shoulders are over your elbows. You also can interlace your fingers so it looks like this. This is very helpful for your shoulders. So your elbows are in line with your shoulders. You can also practice this at the wall. So here's what it looks like on the chair. And then we walk our hips back. Now, if you're seated, you can face a wall and do this, or imagine you're pushing your forearms into the wall. And you can also rock forward and back here. Your hands, your fingers don't have to be interlaced. You might be holding on to the chair as you lean forward and back. So it's a gliding forward and back. There's some weight bearing involved. So we pull our bellies in and up as we lean forward and then inhale back, exhale forward, contracting the belly, inhale back. One more time. And then slowly find your way upright and circle your arms up overhead, reach high and exhale hands of the heart. Now, I love the option if it's available to you to have a wall. It's very, very therapeutic for your shoulders to take your elbows like so and push them into the wall. I really don't like you having this view though. Not my favorite view for you, but just so you see it, your elbows are about level with your shoulders. So you can stand in mountain pose and do this or you can walk back and do a wall dog like this. Shoulder blades come on the back. Generally, people take their elbows too low. It's better to have your elbows up higher so your shoulder blades can come onto your back. Just an option, like you to know about it. Let's find our way to seated. Come on down and ask your body, how is it feeling now? Maybe you take yourself back to that place of remembering a pleasant or joyful time in your life. Remembering what the weather was like, any colors involved, people, temperature of the air, climate, animals around, sound. Notice how it feels in your body to remember something that's pleasant. Breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Breathing in and breathing out. One more time, breathe in and breathe out. Let's stretch the back of the legs so you can use your handy dandy cane or strap or interlace your fingers underneath the right thigh. We're gonna pull the knee in towards us. Spine is upright and then press the heel away. Wow, this cane is cold. I might have to switch to the strap. Wow. So we're pressing heel away, toes are upward. We're, we're, we're 
at that midway point on our sitting bones. So we're not leaning back. We're not leaning forward. We're at that midway point. Breathe in. Breathe out. Take your leg out to the side. Pressing the foot into the cane or the strap or just supporting your leg with your hand. Inhale back to center. Exhale, release, let the foot go. Notice how you're feeling now. Breath is soft. Belly expands on the inhale and softens on the exhale. Okay, using strap, cane, or fingers underneath thigh to press the left leg away from you. I'm using the strap this time. That cane was cold on my foot. Shoulders up and back. I start with my knee bent, so it's higher than my hip. Then push the heel away. Remain tall and keep your elbows by your side. Try not to stress out in your shoulder girdle. Spreading toes. Breathe in and breathe out. Breath is in, breath is out. Feel the sensation of this stretch. Too much, too little, make your adjustments. Clasp the strap with one hand. If you had two on it, take your leg out to the side. We still remain tall. There's a tendency to lean to the right when the leg's out to the left. So try to remain tall. You can always lower your leg down a bit. It can come all the way down. You're still gonna get a stretch through the inner thigh. It's helpful to bend the elbow into the side so that that shoulder doesn't stress out. Inhale, leg comes forward. Exhale, lower it down. Lift your right knee in towards you and maybe take it out to the side of it. Now you can use both hands, one or both, and kind of pull it back. And then you can kind of rock your baby maybe. Rock your baby, right and left. And then place the ankle over the thigh. Feel both sit bones evenly. And start to move forward till you feel sensation on the inner thigh or outer hip. Breathe in and breathe out. Breath is in. And breath is out. Remain for three to five breaths. Then press down through the bottom foot, rise up, other side. Take your time to lift this leg, it's heavy. This is the heaviest bone in our body. Pull the knee in towards you, and then you can rock it, use both hands. Sometimes it's helpful to bring both hands underneath the shin or one under the thigh. Rock your baby. We're almost done with our practice. Place the ankle over the thigh. Sit tall. Lean forward till you feel that nice hip opener. Imagine that there's a beam of light going from the bottom of your spine out through your, out through your vertebrae, out through the crown of your head as you lean forward and you feel sensation in your hip. Breathe in, breathe out, release the leg. Take a few minutes here for rest and relaxation. You can always take longer on your own. The body needs this restorative. I know it's the part we wanna skip, but they're even finding, or there were, I just read about a researcher who's looking at long-term COVID. 
and she was doing research about how they used to way back when 1800 1900s have a period of convalescence or restoring and now in our society that's not appropriate if you're ready to move you move so give yourself though this pause to let the body expand to feel sensation in the body to let the body return to a nice steady state breathing in and out through the nose softly, slowly, and deeply, belly breathing. Remain here for several minutes, even when we close. Feel the sensation of being rather than doing. Feel the sensation throughout your whole body of breathing in and out. There's a pulsation even when we're still. Breathing in and breathing out. As we close our class together, we bring our palms in front of our heart. Feeling the palms touching, feeling the sensation of gratitude for our practice, for being together in community, for the support of the Michigan Parkinson Foundation. For all of you who gather today to do our practice together. Namaste. If I don't see you for, well, I won't see you for Good Friday. Deb Coling will be subbing for me and getting the preparations ready for our Passover Seder. And I hope you all have a good Friday and happy Easter, whatever you may be celebrating. Namaste, everyone.